Hi, this is John, and this is part two of the white linen tutorial. So last tutorial, we looked at modeling clotheslines and doing some basic clothing modeling in Marvelous Designer. And in this tutorial, we're going to continue the modeling and talk a little bit about cloth thickness, and then we'll model the clothespin, and we'll lay out the scene. So here in Blender, Let's go ahead and let's talk about thickness for a minute. So in the last tutorial, I told you to go ahead and export your cloth with thickness, if you remember. And the reason I said to do that was so that you get this little bit of thickness here inside of Blender. And that little bit of thickness is going to do two things. It's going to first add just a tiny bit more realism to your cloth because cloth is not paper thin but it's also going to change the way the cloth looks when it's shaded um, this clothing in this particular image if I go back to that uh, that first image there it's semi translucent and so some of the light is actually passing through the cloth and without having thickness too much light passes through the cloth in the translucent shader and so it's important to have just a little bit of thickness because it's going to give it a little bit more realism as far as the shading and as far as how it actually looks in the 3d view so some of you might be wondering why this cloth looks like this here in my 3d view why it's got this crazy pattern dancing around on it and the reason for that is because on these garments and these sheets I did not actually export with thickness from Marvelous Designer so this one I did obviously there's no problem here but these ones I didn't and so I ended up adding thickness after the fact here in Blender because I was just moving really fast and didn't want to go back to Marvelous Designer at the time so what you're seeing is actually two layers of cloth on top of one another and what we're getting here is a problem actually with the clipping plane um, because my clip is set to 0 0.01 and so if I actually increase this you'll notice the problem goes away um, it's just a visual artifact it's not actually a problem in the 3d view um, if I set this back to 0 0.01 you can see here I've added a solidify modifier and that is what's adding thickness to this cloth here so if I turn that off you'll notice it goes away and you can see the problem here with not having any thickness is we get this problem with our normals because this mesh is not double-sided um, it's just a single-sided sheet we're gonna have problems with our normals which are facing out right now um, not shading correctly when we go and uh, and shade this so by adding some thickness we now have normals facing in both directions and like I said this problem you can notice it actually goes away if I zoom in because it's actually a problem with the clipping plane is not actually a problem so if I increase my clipping plane it goes away and I've done that for all of these all of these are just using a thickness modifier or a solidify modifier and they're adding a little bit of thickness now one thing that's important uh, to make sure you do when you if you use the solidify modifier hopefully you've just exported it from marvelous designer with thickness and then you don't have to worry about this but if you do use the solidify modifier with these triangulated meshes the solidify modifier does not do very well when it comes to the normals along the edge so by default the solidify modifier has this fill rim turned on and what that's doing, if I can zoom in here a little bit, let's get a little bit closer. Oh, my clipping plane is set to too high. Let's go back to 0 0.01. And we'll zoom in here. So what the thickness modifier is doing is it's adding just a tiny bit of thickness and it's filling in the rim between the two layers. If I increase this thickness, it'll be much more apparent. Let me increase this to something pretty big something that you normally wouldn't do here you can see now the difference and so you can see there's two layers 
and this is the, this represents the thickness that inner layer and by clicking on fill rim it's actually filling in the gap between those the reason you do not want to do that is the normals along that edge end up being really yucky um, they don't actually look very good and you end up getting kind of these dark artifacts along the edge along your border edges so watch what happens when I turn off fill rim you see the difference along that edge and we could actually fix this we could go you can see it especially down here we could fix this by actually applying this modifier and going and adding some more resolution there along those edges um, but we really don't need to do that because it's such a small amount of thickness we can actually just turn fill rim off and you know what we're not going to even notice it from this far back especially since this is going to be blurry what this thickness really is doing for these far back pieces of clothing is it's just going to help us with this translucent shading so that's what the solidify modifier is doing in here and that's how you can use it if you need to add thickness after the fact so let's go ahead put this back something like 0.3 no even higher it's got to be pretty high to get rid of that display artifact all right so now let's look at modif or look at modeling a clothespin so that's the other model that we have to create in this scene we've got a lot of clothespins and so let's go ahead and make one so I'm gonna hop on over here to this layer where I have a clothespin that I've separated here we've got to put our clipping plane back to something smaller so we can get in nice and close here and this clothespin really is incredibly simple all I did was I went online and found an image of a clothespin and I started with a box a cube and I just started to model my clothespin that way so I'll really quickly block it in just so you can kind of get the idea of how I went about this you know so we'll scale it up here and I'll go ahead whoops okay let's go ahead and select these guys and I'm gonna hit extrude and here I'm just using the E key to go ahead and extrude along my clothespin here extrude 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 we'll go here we'll go here and we'll go ahead and we'll go all the way to the end let's put this let's put this so we can actually see through this mesh a little bit here okay so now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start Oops. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start to move some of these pieces like so and I'm gonna turn on my wireframe so we can just look at this template now, I didn't actually have a template when I was uh, originally making this I was just looking at an image um, but basically you're just going to start roughing out the shape just like so and I would go ahead and I would extrude this again and go ahead and move this in like this and then once we have that basic shape what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to start to refine things and we'll do that with our loop cut and slide here which the hotkey is control R and so I'd go ahead and I'd add another loop here and I would move this up you know so I start to get my curvature go ahead and do that again here move it up move this this way a little bit and you can see what I'm doing here it's really nothing uh, fancy it's just simple poly modeling moving pretty quickly and um, creating the basic shape so and we'll go ahead and add one more in here go ahead and move that down so we get the basic shape so once I've blocked in the basic shape what I went ahead and did is I add a subdivision surface modifier so I can see what this thing is looking like 
when it's got subdivision surfaces turned on. And then I'll go ahead and go back into edit mode and I'll add another loop. And I'll go ahead and I'll slide it that way, add another loop, slide it this way. So I make sure my shape is nice and defined. I'll go ahead and I'll add another loop along here so we keep our nice boxy square clothespin shape. Another loop along here. And you can see how this is coming together. So here's the basic look of the clothespin already. And I'm not going to go through noodling this to death. You know, obviously we would make sure that this gets nice and smooth and everything. Well, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. So after I had modeled the basic shape, what I did was I came in here and I found the mirror modifier. And if I come to the mirror modifier and then I select my mesh and I translate it along X, I can go ahead and I can mirror the opposite side just like so. And I would actually need to take it a little bit further. So there's a little bit of a gap. And so now I have the two sides of my clothespin. And the nice thing about this mirror modifier, let me move this out of the way, is that any changes you make to one side will be mirrored across to the other side. So if I come in here and let's say I want to add another cut here, you know, to kind of make this a little bit, um, make this a little bit tighter here, you'll notice that the change is happening on both sides. So this is a great way to kind of complete your model uh, with that mirror modifier. You know, and we might want to come in here and, um, whoops, come in here and go ahead and add this like that, you know, something like that. So that's the way I modeled the basic shape. Let's go ahead and look at how to model the spring now. So the spring is actually really simple as well. What we're going to need is we're going to need a circle. And so we'll go ahead and we'll scale this circle down. And what we're going to do with this circle is I'm going to come up here and I'm going to turn on a screw modifier. And with this screw modifier, let's go ahead here and I'll, we'll need to scale this down a bit. But we'll go ahead and we'll tr make sure this is turned on to Y. I believe is what we're going to need here. Let's see. No, not Y. It looks like we are going to want, actually, you know, we should probably rotate this. Rotate this along. Oh no, we've got our close pin like that, so we don't want to do that. bit confused at the moment what angle I'm what angle I'm doing this at. There we go. That's what we need. We need it to offset. We need it to actually offset the um, the mesh from its its center point. So you'll notice as I go up and down here offset from the center point is what's actually allowing us to create this screw here. And so this screw parameter is how far out our screw goes. And then the iterations oops, is how many times we're repeating it. So that's the basics of modeling the spring portion. You know, I do something just like that. And once I was done with this, I just hit apply, go out of edit mode, hit apply. And then all I did was I took these edges here. I just selected that edge loop with Alt Shift. So Alt Shift, click on an edge. And then all I did was I extruded it like so. Really nothing fancy. And then I went ahead and added a cut in here and maybe moved it, you know, out a little bit. Maybe I added one more. You know, moved it down, moved it out a little bit, something like that. So that's how I created my basic spring, and then I just you know pulled it around in a loop here and did the same thing on the other side. Um, really nothing too fancy. And so that is the basics of modeling the clothespin. Like I said, it's a 
very simple model. Um, and it's just using a couple of modifiers to make it nice and smooth and give us a little bit more subdivision. So once you've mod modeled that clothes pin, what you need to do is you need to come and you need to lay out your scene. Let's go ahead and put this back up to something a little bit higher so we don't have to look at that nasty artifact. So the way I like to lay out my scenes is I like to set up my camera first. Um, and so you'll do that by going and creating a camera here in your scene if you don't already have one. And once you have that camera set, you'll go ahead and you'll look through it. And I start to just compose things in a way that will look interesting. So I see this video is running about 16 minutes now is a little longer than I want it to go so I'm gonna go ahead and cut it right here and we'll continue the layout in the next video thanks for watching